And welcome to the Monday edition of the Chris Alcedo Show here on Newsmax TV. You know, I was privileged to be part of Newsmax TV's coverage of President Trump's return to the national stage, his speech at CPAC. One of my fellow analysts was the great Sebastian Gorka, who told us that he and his wife, upon watching President Trump's speech, said it was great to see him back. And it was great, wasn't it? President Trump started his speech by asking, do you miss me yet? The answer is yes, Mr. President. The United States misses having a pro-American president at the White House. We give our reaction to President Trump's CPAC speech in tonight's preamble. The biggest news that President Trump made during his speech was the quashing of the idea that he was going to be a champion of the Patriot Party. We're not starting new parties. You know, they kept saying, he's going to start a brand new party. We have the Republican Party. It's going to unite and be stronger than ever before. I am not starting a new party. You heard the president right there. He will not be starting a third party. Instead, he'll try to deliver the Republican Party from being the right of center party of Mitch McConnell, Adam Kissinger, Liz Cheney, Ben Sass, Mitt Romney, Fred Upton, and others back into a party that's conservative. If anyone can do it, President Trump can. But up until this point, the conservative movement has been unable to change the flaccid GOP, a point I made during yesterday's Newsmax TV's post-Trump speech analysis. A lot of people who have had experience in the Republican Party, and look, and if anybody can do this, I got to tell you, John, it's going to be Donald J. Trump. But a lot of people who've had experience in Republican politics for a good many years, we in the conservative movement, for example, know that you, you don't change the Republican Party. The Republican Party typically changes you. And they couldn't change President Trump, hence why some of them want him out of the party. Meanwhile, President Trump also called out the idiocy of the Harris-Biden administration's illegal immigration policies and the harm and human rights abuses these policies are spawning. The Harris-Biden agenda is hurting both American citizens and citizens of other countries. Joe Biden has triggered a massive flood of illegal immigration into our country, the likes of which we have never seen before. They're coming up by the tens of thousands. So they're all coming because of promises and foolish words. Perhaps worst of all, Joe Biden's decision to cancel border security has single-handedly launched a youth migrant crisis that is enriching child smugglers, vicious criminal cartels, and some of the most evil people on the planet. Boy, that is true. President Trump is the only president in my lifetime to seriously work to put an end to illegal immigration into the United States, to stop and thwart vapid and vacuous laws passed by both Democrats and Republicans, laws that are designed to promote illegal immigration regardless of the will of the vast majority of Americans. President Trump recognizes that illegal immigration is wrong, it's immoral, and it's bad for any nation forced to endure it by its political class. In calling out Joe Biden and his extremist policies, Trump also took aim at the basket of biased press. What he signed with those executive orders, they weren't things that were discussed. We didn't know all about him and the press because they're fake news. They're the biggest fakers there are. But the press refused to ask the questions. And when I asked the questions on television, on the debate, Chris Wallace in this case and others refused to let him answer. They refused to let him answer the questions. Maybe we could have found something or if the media did its job, which they don't. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the biased press, Trump showed us the way on how to deal with these people. Turns out these left-wing opinion folks disguised as news anchors are great at asking unfair questions, but they really suck at answering straightforward questions about their own behavior. Case in point, liberal opinion host Jim Acosta being confronted at CPAC by David Marcus of The Federalist. The question, why isn't CNN covering the growing Governor Andrew Cuomo scandals? Anyway, When's CNN going to deal sure with Cuomo? we are covering it. I don't no, know you're not. No, about. you're not. I, I, you're not. Well... You're not. Okay, we agree to disagree. You no, we don't our, agree to disagree. You're not covering Cuomo. I, I'm sorry, but well, I'm what do you do think about, what, what, what do you think about it? What do you have to say about Cuomo? 
I'm here to do a job right now. Oh, I'm not oh, here oh. to talk to you. You have plenty to say about Trump. Nothing to say about Cuomo? I'm here to do a job. What do you have to say about Cuomo? Nothing? Nothing, right? You have nothing to say about Andrew Cuomo. The emperor of New York and you have nothing to say. Did you hear the guy in the background? Isn't your job reporting, Jim? Not at CNN, it's not. Remember, that's the same Jim Acosta. He's made a career of interrupting his colleagues, trying to dominate the White House press room during President Trump's first term. You know, it was refreshing to see him get a taste of his own medicine for a change. I'd also like to point out that Mr. Acosta did a lousy job in defending his network's virtual silence on the ever-growing scandals surrounding New York's disgraced governor. You know, it seems like we've been afflicted with the Socialist Democrats and their cancerous anti-American policies for years now, even though it's only been six weeks. It was a blessing to hear President Trump reminding us about what our true mission is. Who knows? Maybe I'll look back on Trump's CPAC speech as a, as a moment in time that spurred a rebellion against socialist policies and those who are seeking the ruination of our blessed land. We may look back and find his speech was the beginning of the GOP turning away from a party that normalizes the deviant behavior of Democrat socialists and instead opposes Democrats. History may record that this speech would be a watershed moment that kept the America First agenda alive. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.